Mr. Watson here and in this video we're going to take a look at achievement motivation. So achievement motivation. This links personality with the degree of competitiveness shown by an individual. Now competitiveness is in bold there because with the Cambridge exam board they want us to look at achievement motivation in a sport specific context and competitiveness is how much an individual is motivated to succeed in sport. Okay. So some psychologists believe um, that achievement motivation is a product of nature. It's, uh, ge it's genetic, it's inherited. We are already predisposed to how motivated we will be. So they're focusing on the trait side of it only. So one individual strives to surpass another. It's genetically, it's inherited, okay? On the other hand, Bandura believes it's a competitive drive that's a product of learning, okay? So from the environment. However, for us um, and this syllabus, we're just going to focus on what we've heard before, the interactionist approach. So how Hollander used his model for an interactionist approach with personality, Atkinson and McClelland have an interactionist approach for achievement motivation. And this predicts that achievement motivation is generated through a combination of personality and situational factors. Okay, so their personality trait is activated by a situation. So let's start with personality traits. So what we're going to see here is two continuums, two scales, and we have the need to achieve. So that's known as knack or natch, okay? And that's how you might see it in the exam. Describe someone who is natch, okay? That's their personality. And then you have low need to achieve at the other end. So what the need to achieve is, so if we're looking at high knack, someone who's high in the need to achieve, they enjoy competition, they take risks, they welcome a challenge, they welcome feedback on their performance, and they try harder after failure. Okay, so this is a person that works hard to beat their own personal best. Okay. Then we have a high need to avoid failure and a low need to avoid failure. So someone who's high naff, naff, the need to avoid failure, they avoid challenges. They look to take the easy option. They take no responsibility for their performance and they give up if they don't achieve success. Okay, so this is a person who doesn't like 50-50 situations. They're, they're not willing to take risks. They're more pessimistic in their personality. Now, as a coach, we're looking for athletes to be at this point here. They show a high degree of competitiveness, so that high need to achieve, combined with a low need to avoid failure. So they're always going to be looking for self-improvement and they're going to pers persist in adversity and keep on going because they're motivated to achieve success. Okay, so that's the personality traits. And we'll give you another example here. So imagine you're in the last five minutes of a semi-final in which the score is 1-1. You've just won a penalty kick and the coach asks you if you want to take it. So you know that there's a good 50-50 ch chance, let's say, because of the situation, last five minutes, it's 1-1. Probably 50% chance you score, 50% chance you miss. So what would you do? If you say... Yep, yeah, you stand up, I'll take the kick, I'm ready. This shows behavior that's driven by the need to achieve. It's called approach behavior. It shows that you are willing to accept a challenge. You're motivated despite the possibility of failure. Okay. However, if you were to say no thanks or stay quiet and show from your body language that you're not ready to take it, this behavior is driven by the need to avoid failure. It's called avoidance behavior. Okay. So this is you're motivated to protect your self-esteem. You're 
you're not avoiding the failure. You're not motivated to actually be the person who scores it, okay? You don't want to take the risk because you would be evaluated in that moment. Have you missed? Have you scored? So you're looking to avoid that situation, okay? So it, the achievement motivation in this sense can be seen as a measurement of what drives individuals to succeed or hang back and play safe. So we can kind of tell, do you have, are you natch or are you naff? Will, will you have that approach behavior towards a challenge or will you have that avoidance behavior? Okay. Um, and here is just a table going through characteristics of natch and naff. Now, this is a, an opportunity where you can pause the video and you can write down other characteristics as these often come up in exam questions about describing um, these type of performers. Okay, so let's look on the other side, the situation. So the situation, so it's a personality trait that's activated by a situation. So the situation is made up of the probability of success and the incentive value of success. So the probability of success being very straightforward, the extent to which success is likely, 10%, 20%, 50%, 100%, okay? And the incentive value of success, so that intrinsic value that you experience after success is achieved, so did you just beat a high-ranking opponent? Have you made your names in the newspapers? Okay, so you're known as the person who beat the person. Okay, you're the, you beat the champ. Is there big incentive? Or is it an equally um, ability opponent and everyone's watching that game because no one knows who's going to win and you come out the winner. So you've just proved to the audience in that debate who is the best. So in that Messi-Ronaldo situation, they always have that incentive. If someone scores more goals than the other, in the media, it's going out as now the other one's on top. Um, or you can have low incentive value, so kind of like a run of the mill, you're playing someone you're supposed to beat, okay, um, high percent in chance of winning, there's little less incentive of success because you pretty much know that you're going to win. So if we look at it on a graph here, so we have probability of success on the bottom, low and high, and incentive value on the side, low and high. Now, we look at it going down on the arrow here. Now, up here is where on this task, task one, this is where your natch performers are going to be. And TAS there means tendency to approach situations, that approach behavior. So the probability of success is either 50% or lower. Your natch performers are more likely to take that on because the need to avoid failure is lower. They're not fearing that. They're motivated to succeed, so they're more likely to take on these tasks. And on the other hand, in a, a, set, a different task, one that has high probability of success, okay, that weakens the need to achieve. So it, it suits the, the personality type of you're looking to avoid, okay. So high ability, but there's not much incentive, okay. Now, going to look at here how this can change a little bit okay now let's just say I was to play Roger Federer in tennis now we both might be match personalities okay but in this situation Roger Federer is clearly more likely to beat myself okay but you see how there's more incentive for me to beat him because if I go and beat Roger Federer in a tennis game, I literally go down as the best PE teacher in history. Okay, my name is out there. Okay, but for Roger Federer, even though he's a natch personality type, he, he obviously you've seen him over the years still playing tennis, still wi winning major tournaments. There's not much incentive for him to beat me, so he's almost just looking, to, oh, let's make sure I don't get beat off this guy. That's going to embarrass me. So there are situations where your your personality might change, okay? So what the Atkinson and McClellan theory suggests or is that 50-50 situations are the best predictors of behavior for natch performers. 
So if you make a 50-50 situation, this is going to motivate a Natch performer the most because they know they have a 50% chance of winning, but they're also a little bit worried about losing because everyone has some Natch and some Natch. It just depends on how it's balanced, okay? So that this is the what the theory suggests is that they're most likely to challenge themselves in this situation, okay? Um, so this would be like Federer playing Nadal. They've both beaten each other, okay? Um, everyone uh, views these games. They love to see Federer v Nadal because they know it's going to be an intense game and they're not sure who's going to win. Um, and what how we measure that is the incentive will go up depending on what round in the tournament. Is it first round or is it the semi-final? Is it a final? And the more value that will that will go up depending on a situation like that. Okay? So 50-50 situations is when a natch is more likely and to take the risks. Okay? It's their highest point of motivation. Because if they kept going into tennis games like, for example, if I look at myself there, I am a Natch personality. I have the need to achieve. But if I'm playing Roger Federer every day of the week, you know, it's, it's going to take years to get to his level. So it will get boring quite quickly. So I'm going to be motivated in them 50-50. That's going to get the best out of my Natch personality. Okay? Now, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, let's just say a boxer who's a NAF performer, they're looking to protect that zero. They don't want to get beat. They're more likely to decline a 50-50 fight. Oh, I'm not ready. I'll, I'll wait. And they'll wait um, and they'll look to protect that where an ambitious boxer, oh, no, we're evenly matched. I'm going to take that fight. Okay. In tennis, you know, the draw is made sometimes out of a hat. So you, you play against who you play. You've decided whether you'll enter the tournament. Um, a NAF performer wouldn't even enter the tournament if they felt, oh no, the competition's too strong. Okay, but it can also be in sport specific situations, a NAF would avoid. So we're going to look at some more examples here. Okay, let's look at golf. Okay, so the distance here is around 235 yards. And if we look at A, that's where the green is, that's where the hole is. Okay, the pin. So that's where. A, na a Natch performer is going to say, I can drive 235 yards. Yeah, there is a chance I'll go in the water. There is a chance I might go in the bunker. But if I make this shot, okay, I'm going to learn a lot from it. I'm going to improve. There's good incentive because the camera is going to pick up on an awesome shot, okay? So they're going to go for it. The NAF performer is going to take it safe. They're going to be like, oh, I don't want to be going in the water on TV um, or in front of my friends. I'm going to play it into the middle of the green and then take that extra shot to get on the green when the distance is a little lower. Okay, now there are situations where that might change. So this is where a natch could change to a naff. So let's just say I'm a natch performer. I go first. Okay, take the shot. I'm in the water. Now, even if the person going second are personality they are a natch performer they might think well he's already got a penalty shot now i'll play it safe because i'm more likely to win the hole so their personality might be natch but they might um play it safe in that situation it doesn't mean that they're not have the need okay conversely if they're both natch and a the person goes first lands it on the green the second person's going to do it too because he's seen it happen he wants to do it because he he knows that it's a made shot now. There is no playing it safe. I need to try a match, otherwise I'm going to lose. Okay. And here we have basketball. So if I was to say in PE, you get one shot. Whoever gets the most points wins. Where are you shooting from? Now your NAF performers are going to be scared of missing in front of the class. Okay. So they might just take a layup or a closer shot. Okay. So that they have a higher probability of success, okay? Less incentive, but they're not going to fail, okay, if, if they know how to do a layup. Your natch performance is going to take the three points, that 50-50 shot, okay? If I get it in, I've, I've got the maximum point. There's a 
probability I'm going to get it in, but I also might miss three point shots are not easy, okay, unless you're Steph Curry. Um, and then C. Now, while you might think, oh, why is C not Natch? Now, let's just say C is a near impossible shot. So no one in P is going to make that shot. A NAF performer would do this through something called heroic syndrome. So the attention of them missing the shot is taken away because everyone's like, oh, wow, we try to score from there. But the reality is they knew they were missing and they were protecting their self-esteem because everyone's like, oh, cool, he tried to, to score from there. Okay, so that, that's a, another thing. So as you can see, this can change in situations. But in the simplest terms, your natch is going to take the riskier situation, okay, because they're motivated to achieve. They're motivated on self-improvement, okay. Your NAF are looking to avoid situations like that. They're avoiding failure, okay. So how do we develop a natch mentality, okay. So this is what coaches can do. You can give success and positive experiences in training. Gradually increase the task difficulty. So linking to like progressive overload if we're in a, a gym environment, okay. But even in sports training, so gradually increase the task difficulty, but not too much. And that's going to encourage NAF performers to push themselves just step by step. Goal setting, smarter, so setting achievable, realistic goals, okay, giving it a measurement and being specific, that's going to help with this increasing task difficulty, having smarter goals. Positive feedback, so the coach, give positive feedback to that performer, especially if they've just failed, give good praise, give feedback, say you might have missed this time, but actually your goal swings developed a lot more, we're just looking to develop more power now, we're nearly there. Okay, reduce punishment. So don't refrain from giving feedback. Feedback is what's going to help develop that natch mentality. But don't start making people do push-ups or run laps if they do fail because that's going to have um, further consequences. It's not going to help. Okay, and then redefine failure. So give them a new meaning of failure, what it is. So the standard one, fail, first attempt in learning. So redefine what it means is that they're just on a journey to improvement. It doesn't mean that they'll never be able to do it. Okay, what determines NAF or NAF? So I've already covered this a little bit. Now, like most psychological theories, they're there to be criticized. Now, the achievement motivation is used quite a lot, okay, but... Again, it's an interactionist. Yes, you'll have a personality, but it can change. Okay, and I've just given you an example in golf where a natch might change to a naff in that situation because the player before him already has a penalty shot. Okay, so it can differ across sports. Some people are natch in specific sports, but not in others. Okay, so the importance of the task will determine that need to achieve or need to avoid failure. So if it's a very important task, okay, some people are more likely to look at that avoiding failure because everyone has NAF in them. It's just on the percentages, okay? So importance of the task can change it. Whether someone's confident, again, sport-specific, I have much higher confidence playing cricket than I do tennis, okay? Past success and possibility of future success. So... If you've uh, achieved that before, you're more likely to go at it again, okay? However, possibility of future success, if you've attempted it and it was a big failure and you're thinking, oh, there's no chance, okay? If you're thinking you're years away, you're more likely to avoid that, okay? If you're weeks or months away from that progression, you might still be natural. So there's lots of things that can change your personality, again, you might be genetically natch or naff, like inherited, you're predisposed, okay? Predetermined. Experience in the sport, have you been playing it for 20 years or is it your first week, second week? That's going to play a part, okay? Because if you've got loads of experience, you've probably experienced failure before and you have strategies of how to overcome it, okay? And then anxiety levels, okay? Again, linking to that personality, those who have trait anxiety, they're usually anxious or they're usually 
not their calm, the opposite, and then state anxiety, linking into this situation, um, which links to this interactionist approach. So even though you're a natch, if we think back to the personality video when LeBron James is taking them free throws, it's going to feel a little bit of state anxiety in that situation. It's quite impossible not to. Okay, so these are just things that determine this, okay? So further limitations, okay? So achievement or success can be interpreted in different ways. So there was um, studies done and quite obvious between athletes and non-athletes, athletes were more competitive. They had more achievement motivation in competitive situations. So that's obviously a clear statement. But what um, of greater significance was found that athletes were more focused on task orientation where non-athletes were focused on ego orientation. So if they didn't think they could win the competition or they were comparing themselves to others, okay, that's like an ego orientated goal. Where task orientated was your athletes, they're focused on achieving a personal best. So as you can see, a long jump, achieving a personal best. So as long as they're focused on increasing their distance of that long jump, because then they've achieved success, okay? If winning the competition, that might be a byproduct to them. If they've achieved a personal best and that's got them gold, great, fantastic. That's literally everything they want but they're going in with the mindset i'm beating my personal best today where the ego orientated is just thinking about beating someone else no matter how they get it done okay so this is what it just means achievement or success can mean different things to different people okay another example just to finish up here it would be in fitness okay so i'm in i'm Focus and motivate on improving my aerial capacity. However, I'm not looking to go into any marathon races. I'm just working hard on my own. So I, I am actually motivated in achieving success. It just means something different to me. Okay, so just to summarize, we've got Natch and Naf. Natch, high achievers, high need to achieve. They like feedback, they're motivated to perform. Okay. N NAF, they're looking to avoid risky situations, protect their self-esteem. They don't want feedback, okay? And then we have situations, probability of success and incentive of success. So then 50-50 situations are going to be the best for your NATCH performers, okay? And that's achievement motivation. Thank you.